Chapter 14, Basic Concepts of Immunity and Inflammation. So chapter 13, we discussed about the formation of plaque and biofilm. So plaque and biofilm, uh, plaque biofilm contributes directly to the destruction of the periodontal supporting tissues. We're gonna also talk about the um, indirect destruction of the periodontal tissues that are caused by the immune system and inflammation. How do we survive? We're surrounded by millions of microorganisms. Our hands alone are covered by up to 2 million microorganisms. The only reason that the human body survives is that it has a protective defense system that is very effective at recognizing and fighting the disease causing microorganisms. So the immune system and host response, how does it work? The immune system is a complex body defense system that protects the body against bacteria, viruses, fungi, toxins, and parasites. So there, there are two subdivisions of the immune system. You have your innate immune system, which is the immune system you're born with. Um, it is not what we call antigen specific. It's present at all times, and it does not improve with related exposure to an infectious agent. Um, it stays the same all the time. It's pretty constant. Then you have your adaptive immune system. It develops throughout life. It is antigen specific, which we'll talk about the antigen specific, non-specific um, down the, in a few more slides. The lag time between the infection and response. There's a lag time between the infection and the response. And the memory develops, which may provide lifelong immunity. So this is the type, um, an example of your adaptive immune system would be like um, your exposure to chicken pox. And you get the um, chicken pox virus and your body has, um, your immune system remembers that particular type of virus. And so that after you've had the response to it, you build up immunity to it so you don't get infected again a second time. Self versus non-self, what does that mean? So when your immune system encounters cells, it has to first determine the, the um, origin of, the of those cells. Is it yourself or is it something else? Um, substances can be harmless like pollen or pathogenic, like um, pathogenic like bacteria. So um, you can have a reaction or immune response to something like ragweed or pollen. Um, those are immune or allergic reactions. And then you can have pathogens like bacteria that your body reacts to. And there are different um, levels of, of reaction. Autoimmune diseases, on the other hand, are diseases where an illness that causes the immune system to produce antibodies that attack your normal body tissues as well, um, hence the term autoimmune. So your body is exposed to something that causes your immune system to react, but then your immune system attacks itself too, and it attacks healthy normal body tissue. So this is like kind of a diagram of your immune defense system. Infectious organisms taking advantage of uh, breaches in the body's barriers. So in other words, you have a cut on your skin, um, which is a barrier, and your um, organisms, your bacteria, take advantage of that breakdown in your defense. Um, transformation of normal body cells into tumor cells that threaten the body. So that's kind of how cancer develops. Um, I'm sure it's much more complicated than this simple little explanation, but basically um, your immune system causes a transformation of normal body cells into tumor cells. Um, grafts from non-identical donors. So if you have tissue that did not belong to you, your body can react to it. That's um, why like when patients have um, organ transplants and things like that, they take anti um, immunosuppressive drugs because they suppress your immune system from recognizing that as a foreign object and attacking it. Um, toxic substances released by other organisms are from environmental sources, so it will recognize toxins. Um, and then organisms invading and producing and reproducing in the human body as part of their life cycle. So just regular parasitic organisms um, invade and reproduce in the human body and that your body recognize those, recognizes those organisms. 
Um, your immune response, the prime purpose, or the main reason you have it is to defend, to defend the life of the individual. So your immune system is extremely important. Your immune system is what protects you from, it protects your life from everything around you, whether it's um, pollen, something as harmless as pollen, or bacteria, um, whether it's mild bacteria, or whether it's like a staph infection on your finger or MRSA, um, all the way to cancer cells. Um, your host response is the way an individual's body responds to the infection is known as the host response. The body responds by sending certain cells to the infection site and then producing biochemical substances to counteract the foreign invaders. So it's a it's more complicated than that. We're going to go over that in, in a few slides, but um, your body responds first by sending your, your immune cells to it, to the site of the infection, and then um, it produces biochemical substances to counteract or to kill off those foreign invaders. So there are consequences to the loss of immune function. The loss of immune function is deadly to the body. If you can't fight off bacteria that are normal in the environment, then and viruses that are normal in the environment, then um, anything that seems like it would be harmless to one person can be deadly to another. HIV is one example of an, a, um, a disease that compromises the immune system to a point where usually what an HIV patient would, um, what they die from is some other kind of infection. So some other bacteria or a virus invades their body and they don't have enough immune cells to be able to fight it off and it ultimately attacks them and kills them. Um, overzealous immune system can be a problem. So if your immune system overreacts to things or over responds, um, that reaction itself can become potentially harmful to your body. Um, that's what happens in periodontitis. An overzealous response of the immune system occurs in periodontitis. So you get a lot of inflammatory cells that are attacking the bacteria and that those inflammatory cells become destructive. So like in a strep infection, the strep infection stimulates the immune system and the immune system sends all kinds of inflammatory cells to the area and those inflammatory cells become dangerous or, or destructive to normal tissue. One example would be the way um, when your body, your immune system reacts to strep, those particular immune, immune cells can destroy heart tissue. Components of the immune system. So what makes up our immune system? Components of the immune system that play an important role in combating periodontal disease are cellular defenders such as um, phagocytes or lymphocytes and then the complement system. So what does all that mean? Here's a picture of leukocytes. Leukocytes are inflammatory cells and there are different kinds of leukocytes that invade at different types or at different um, times during bacterial invasion. So your first, your leukocytes are your white blood cells. They capture microorganisms all on their own. Polynuclear, I can't say the word, PMNs as we abbreviate them, or neutrophils as they're commonly known as, um, are the first responders in bacterial in invasion. So they run directly to the site of the invasion by the bacteria. Um, and they capture the microorganisms on their own. And so they are what we call first responders. Then come the lymphocytes. They're small white blood cells that reorganize and control the invaders. So if the neutrophils can't and kill all of the invaders just with their own attack, they call in the lymphocytes and the lymphocytes are next on the scene. And they um, help to control the invaders and reorganize so that these um, other immune cells can continue to kill off the bacteria or the um, invader. So phagocytosis is the process by which the leukocytes engulf and digest the microorganisms. So it's like an eating process. Let's talk about the leukocytes. Polymorphonuclear leukocytes, PMNs, or neutrophils. 
you'll probably more commonly hear them called neutrophils when you're reading um, studies and things like that. They are the rapid first responders. They get on the scene and they get on the scene quickly. So you cut yourself and bacteria starts to get inside the wound. Um, your neutrophils rapidly respond to the area to kill off the bacteria that are entering the area. They move through the capillary walls and into tissue. So they're circulating in the bloodstream and when they see or are called to duty, um, the alarm is sounded and the first responders are needed, they move through the capillary walls and go into the tissue of the area where the wound is. Um, they're attracted to the bacteria by a process called chemotaxis. So um, they, get, they are called to the area and then um, they capture and destroy the bacterial invaders. So they, cap they wrap around them and they engulf them. And then the PMN contains many strong bactericidal and digestive enzymes called lysosomes. They are short-lived cells. They die when they become engorged with bacteria. So they will eat the bacteria until they're full and then they die. They're the most effective in destroying periodontal pathogens. Their direct response, their first responders, they come on quickly and they're very effective. So then come the monocytes. The monocytes are, are what they're called monocytes when they're in the bloodstream. Um, after they leave the bloodstream and head toward into the tissue to the site of the wound or the bacterial invasion, they're called macrophages. They're highly phagocytic. In other words, they can eat a lot and they're slower to arrive than the PMNs. They are most numerous in chronic inflammation they are long-lived cells, so they live a long time. Unlike the PMNs that engulf and die pretty quickly, they are much slower and they live longer. And there's more of them. And then they present um, antigen to T cells. So those are lymphocytes. Let's look at lymphocytes. So we have two different kinds of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are small leukocytes that help defend the body. There are two main types, the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are commonly known as B cells. T lymphocytes are T cells. They help in the defense against bacteria, viruses, and fungi. And their main function is to intensify the response of other immune cells. So they get everybody worked up so that we get more of those cells and we get, um, they work harder and faster. The principal function of the B cells is to make antibodies and they can differentiate into two types of B cells. We have plasma B cells and memory B cells. So we're basically taking a family tree and we're breaking down all of the cells. So well, antibodies are Y-shaped proteins so they're proteins. On one, one end of the Y binds to the B cell and the other end binds to the microorganism. So um, the antibody connects the B cell to the microorganism. Im immunoglobulins, I know from basic micro classes, you've heard of immunoglobulins, they are um, antibodies. So they're just another name for antibodies. There are five major classes. Um, IgM, IgD, IgG, IgA, and IgE. So how do the antibodies participate in the host defense? They neutralize bacteria to prevent them from destroying the host cells. So they try to slow the bacteria, bacterial destruction down. They coat the bacteria, making them more susceptible to phagocytosis. So if the bacteria have their own protective extracellular matrix, that's protecting them. Um, the um, and these antibodies help to um, coat the bacteria, making them more susceptible then to other um, uh, immune cells to come and engulf them. And they also activate the complement system, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. The T lymphocytes or T cells function to intensify the response of other immune cells to the bacterial invasion and as well. The T cells produce substances called cytokines that further stimulate the immune response. So cytokines come off the T cells and they, again, intensify the response. 
A cytokine is a general name for any protein that is secreted by cells and affects the behavior of nearby cells. So the complement system, what is the complement system? The immune cells or defenders are only activated if they encounter a microorganism. Pathogens can avoid contact with the immune cells. If this happens, the complement system is um, put into place. It's a complex series of proteins circulating in the blood that work to facilitate phagocytosis of bacteria and kill bacteria directly by puncturing cell wall membranes. So uh, bacteria that directly puncture the bacterial cell membranes kills the bacteria, but when you puncture the membrane it the, of the gram-negative bacteria, they release um, lipo lipopolysaccharides or endotoxins. And those endotoxins that are released, even though the cell wall is, the cell itself is going to die, the endotoxins themselves become destructive. So the functions of the complement system is destruction of pathogens, obstinization of pathogens, recruitment of phagocytes, and the immune clearance. So let's talk about each of those. So destruction of pathogens. The components of the complement can destroy certain microorganisms directly by punctioning their cell membranes. So they come along and they puncture the cell membranes. This creates a protein called a membrane attack complex. This protein can puncture cell membranes of certain bacteria called lysis. So when it punctures the membrane, um, it's called lysis and that kills the bacterial cell. Opsonization of pathogens facilitates the capture and destruction of bacteria by phagocytosis. So this process is called opsonization of pathogens. The complement components um, coat the surface of the bacteria, allowing the phagocytes to recognize, engulf, and destroy bacteria. So um, the com um, components of com the complement system can um, coat the surface of the bacteria and make, the, make it easier to attract the immune cells so that the immune cells can then engulf or eat the bacteria. That's the most important action of the complement system. So it kind of goes back to square one. The most important thing is making the bacteria able to be engulfed and destroyed. Um, again, the other, the alternative is to um, puncture the cell wall so that the bacteria die, but that releases the pot lipopolysaccharides or endotoxins. Recruitment of phagocytes. So the complement system can recruit additional phagocytic cells to the site of the infection. So um, more cells can damage more bacteria or make it prepare it for um, destruction. And immune clearance, the complement system acts as a housekeeper for the body by removing immune complexes from circulation. Here are, here's a picture of the activities of the complement system. So the far picture, the picture on the far left is lysis. So um, this is where it punctures the bacterial wall and um, allows it to, or causing it to die. And then opsonization is where um, the bacteria coat or the, um, it coats it and prepares it for phagocytosis, or in other words, so the immune cells, other immune cells can be attracted to it and engulf it. Um, activation of the inflammatory response. So you've got a complement receptor that activates the inflammatory response so that inflammatory cells will move from the bloodstream to the tissue or to find the bacteria. And then the clearance of the immune complexes. So it's um, it helps to, um, restart or deactivate things. So the leukocyte migration, chemotaxis and phagocytosis. So migration meaning toward the, going toward the bacteria, chemotaxis or preparing the bacteria to be engulfed or destroyed, and then phagocytosis is the action of destroy, engulfing and destroying the bacteria. The leukocytes travel through the bloodstream and into the tissues. So you've got bacterial invasion and the leukocytes 
um, travel through the bloodstream and they exit out to the air tissue invader or the area where the tissue has been invaded. So you cut your finger and the leukocytes that are traveling in your bloodstream exit the bloodstream and go to the tissue. The thin layer of epithelial cells that line the interior surface of the blood vessels is called endothelium. So you, inside your blood vessel, you have this inner layer called endothelium. The leukocytes push their way between the endothelial cells or extravasation, extravasation and enter the connective tissue. So the leukocytes kind of push their way through the endothelial cells and come out into the tissue. That's called transendothelial migration. So then what happens to them? So then once the leukocytes enter the connective tissue, the cells must migrate to the site of the infection. So now they're out of the bloodstream, they're into the connective tissue, and now they've got to find the site of the infection. So chemotaxis is the process whereby the leukocytes enter the connective tissue and are attracted to the site of the infection in response to biochemical compounds released by the invading bacteria. So the leukocytes are now into the connective tissue and they've got to find the bacteria and they are attracted to the bacteria through chemotaxis. Or in other words, the bacteria have released or let off these um, compounds that attract the um, leukocytes. So these leukocytes are sensing this, hey, there it is, there's the party, and so they head on over. And this little illustration shows you, um, you've got the um, bacteria here, and so here's the inflammatory or the uh, immune cells traveling in the bloodstream. So the immune cells push their way through, and now they're heading toward the bacteria. So once they get to the bacteria, the process of phagocytosis occurs, the process by which leukocytes engulf or surround and digest microorganisms. So the steps involved in phagocytosis is that the external cell wall of the phagocytic cell or the PMN or macrophage surround the bacteria. So we've swam over through chemotaxis, we were attracted to the bacteria. Now we're over at the bacteria and the external cell wall of the immune cells surrounds the bacterium. Then the phagocytic vesicle called a phagosome surrounds the ingested bacterium. So now we're surrounding the bacterium. A lysos lysosome granules fuse with the vesicle to form a phagolysosome. So just a combination of those two words. And then the bacterium is ingested within the um, phagolysosome. So now we've ingested it inside and the phagocytic cell discharges the contents into the surrounding tissue. So we basically spit out the contents. And this little illustration shows you, here's the bacterium becomes attached to the membrane. So here's your cell, your immune cell, and it surrounds the bacterium. And then it um, is ingested. So the, it ingests the bacterium. And then um, the phagosome fuses with the lysosome and the lysosomal enzymes digest the captured material. So it's like basically going through its own little digestive tract. And then it releases the digestive products from the cell. So the inflammation and the inflammatory response. Inflammation is the body's protective response to pathogens, foreign bodies, or an injury. The body's response to inflammation focuses um, the host defense components at the site of an infection to eliminate microorganisms and heal the damaged tissue. So first we have to eliminate the microorganisms before we can heal the damaged tissue. The major events in the inflammatory response are tissue invasion by bacteria, which by the way, going back to this slide, when I said about the um, you have to eliminate the microorganisms and heal the damaged tissue. Think about in terms of gingivitis and what we talked about in earlier um, lectures about gingivitis. So you've got the bacterial invasion 
that is causing an inflammatory response to the gingival margin and the gingival papilla, um, or even the, connect, um, the attached gingiva. So you've got this inflammatory response, the redness, the, the increased fluid, um, the sponginess, all of your signs of inflammation. We first have to eliminate the bacteria before that tissue is going to heal. So the patient comes in, they get their teeth cleaned, they go home and they brush and floss regularly. They've eliminated those um, colonies of bacteria or biofilm that formed in that area, and therefore now the tissue can heal. If they don't do anything and they leave the, that biofilm or that layer of bacteria uninterrupted, uh, the, t the microorganisms are still going to be present and so it won't heal the damaged tissue. It won't stop the inflammatory response so the tissue can heal. So here are the major events. You've got your tissue invasion by bacteria. So the bacteria have formed on the teeth, the biofilm has formed, and the um, bacteria are invading the tissue. They injure, um, the reaction is injury to the body. The body's inflammatory response, so right away you get increased blood flow to the body's defense cells and plasma to the invasion site. So now we've got, that's what causes that puffiness and that um, color, the change in the color to red, and the spongy feeling when you press on it with your probe, it doesn't respond back because we've had an increased um, blood flow, increased fluid flow to the area. Um, now the leukocytes plasma pro and plasma proteins leak from the blood vessels into the tissue at the site of the infection. So now the bacteria have invaded the gum tissue at the, the papilla, papillary and gingival margin areas. So the leukocytes and plasma proteins leave the bloodstream and they go into the tissue at the site of the bacterial invasion. The leukocytes fight the invading, invading bacteria and some dish, tissue destruction occurs in the area surrounding the infection site that is a side effect of the body's inflammatory response. So in that um, whole reaction, some of the infection, um, the side effect of the body's inflammatory re response will destroy some of the surrounding tissue. So think about as the um, plaque and biofilm bacteria continuing to invade in a more chronic state, you've got your inflammatory cells that are causing some destruction in the same areas. And that's how the, peri the um, periodontal infection continues to increase. So here's a picture of basic like skin. You, you you've got a nail stuck in your finger. So the tissue damage triggers a local increased blood flow and capillary permeability. So in order for those um, immune cells to get out of the bloodstream and into the surrounding tissue, it makes the um, wall of the capillary more permeable so that the inflammatory cells can exit the bloodstream and into this tissue where the nail is now sitting. The permeable capillaries allow an influx of fluid or exudate and cells into the tissue. So it also allows some fluid to build up into the tissue. That's that swelling or inflammation. Phagocytes uh, migrate to the site of the inflammation. So through chemotaxis or the bacteria attracting them, um, the phagocytic cells are attracted to that area or site of infection. And then um, the phagocytes destroy the bacteria. So through their ability to eat, engulf the bacteria, they destroy the bacteria. So the inflammatory response tr is triggered by the pathogens or the bacteria. Mast cells release chemicals. So they dilate the capillaries and increase vascular perme permeability. So I, when I said about the um, the immune cells have to have a way to get out from the bloodstream into the tissue. So the, um, tish, the capillary wall becomes more permeable. The mast cells are what causes that to happen so that the other inflammatory cells can get out into the tissue. So they increase the blood flow to the area as well. And um, that's what causes the redness and the warmth and the swelling. 
and then your leukocytes pass through the capillary walls into connective tissue. So your leukocytes pass through the capillaries and they go into the connective tissue. And plasma proteins also leak into the tissue. Um, they phagocytize the invading pathogens and release inflammatory mediators that contribute to the inflammatory response. So they are um, phagocytizing or engulfing the invading pathogens and releasing inflammatory mediators to increase the inflammatory response. So what are biochemical mediators? In inflammation, biochemically active compounds secreted by cells that activate the body's inflammatory response. Mediators of importance in periodontitis include cytokines, prostaglandins, and matrix um, metalloproteinases. MMP, I believe, is how they're abbreviated for short. Um, cytokines are leukocytes that the leukocytes secrete cytokines that play a major role in regulating the behavior of immune cells. Cytokines are a subgroup of cytokines, chemokines, I'm sorry, chemokines are a subgroup of cytokines that cause additional immune cells to be attracted to the site of an infection or injury. So there are two stages or two different types of inflammation. You have acute, which is short term, um, it's a normal process that protects and heals the body. The process is achieved by the increased movement of plasma and leukocytes from the blood into the injured tissue. And that increase of blood into the injured tissue causes heat, causes redness, causes swelling, causes pain, and causes a loss of function as a result of the pain and swelling. So think about if your finger um, gets cut, you cut your finger, it becomes warm, it becomes red, it gets swollen, it becomes painful, and you lose function in it because of the result of the swelling and the pain. So you can't bend your finger very well because it's very swollen. The acute inflammatory response, also the blood vessels near the infected site become more permeable. So in order to let the inflammatory cells pass through. The PMNs are the first cells to arrive at the site. They are your first responders. They release cytokines. The liver produces C-reactive proteins, and if the body succeeds in eliminating all the microorganisms, the tissue will heal and inflammation will cease. So we need those inflammatory cells to engulf all the microorganisms so that we can get rid of the inflammation and have the tissue heal. And this is kind of, if you think about gingivitis to periodontitis. So the invading microorganisms are continuously there. The body is continuously in a uh, more a chronic inflammatory state. So we have this acute inflammatory response. If we do not eliminate the bacteria or the microorganisms it, with the acute response, we kick it into the chronic response. The goal, hemostasis, homeostasis is the goal at this stage of the inflammatory process to establish homeostasis, or in other words, the process of the body's tissues maintaining its optimal stage of being. So getting back into balance. Immune cells leave the area, tissue structures return to normal, and the blood flow is reduced with no damage to the tissues. This is basically what happens in gingivitis, in acute gingivitis. You have an inflam you have invasion of microorganisms, the immune response kicks into place, inflammation comes into play, the tissues become red, they become swollen, um, they get fluid filled, the uh, microorganisms are killed off or eliminated, the swelling goes down, the inflammatory response is reduced, and the tissues are repaired. The resolution process uses cells to provide stop signals that lead to shutdown and the clear and clearance of immune cells. So um, there are certain cells that stop the inflammatory process. Once this is accomplished, the body actively shuts down the inflammatory response to limit damage to the host. And the shutdown process prevents progression of inflammation from acute to chronic. So when you don't eliminate the bacteria, the shutdown process doesn't happen, inflammation continues, and inflammation goes from acute 
to chronic. Periodontal diseases are characterized by the dysfunction of the resolution paths that shut down the inflammatory process. The result is a failure of periodontal tissues to heal and a chronic progressive and destructive non-resolving inflammation. So chronic um, inflammation is long-lived, out-of-control inflammatory response that continues for more than a few weeks, a pathologic condition that can destroy healthy tissue and cause more damage than the original problem. So in other words, you can have microorganisms or bacteria that invade your periodontal tissues and um, the acute response kicks in. If the acute issue is not resolved, in other words, the bacteria is not removed or disrupted from forming its dangerous colonies, then the chronic um, inflammation will kick in. Um, as the tissue continues to stay inflamed um, or the inflammatory response continues, the um, inflammatory cells themselves become equally as or more destructive than the actual microorganisms in the bacteria. Classic warning signs seen in acute inflammation usually are absent in chronic inflammation. The problem may go unnoticed by the host or the patient and clinically pain is often absent. So the, um, the symptoms that the patient was experiencing, the inflammation, the redness and all that um, kind of subside in chronic inflammation. And therefore, that's why patients don't notice chronic inflammation. Why does chronic infl inflammation occur? The body is unable to rid itself of the invading organism. The invading microorganisms are persistent and stimulate an exaggerated immune response. So in other words, you did not get the bacterial colonies disrupted. Therefore, the, the microorganisms are still present. Um, as the flora of the microorganisms goes from gram positive to gram negative, the inflammatory response or the body's immune reaction response intensifies because these are more powerful people or organisms now. And so the um, immune response intensifies and those cells become more and more destructive as well. The chronic inflammatory process. Chronic inflammation is characterized by an accumulation of macrophages. Macrophages engulf and digest microorganisms. Leukocytes release inflammatory mediators that perpetrate the inflammatory response. So chronic inflammation, some examples of chronic inflammation would be rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, asthma, gingivitis, periodontitis, um, atherosclerosis, and I highlighted periodontitis as being one of the chronic inflammatory processes. Periods of remission and exacerbation. So signs and symptoms of chronic inflammation may partially or completely disappear during a period of remission. The signs of, and symptoms may recur in all of their severity in um, an active period of disease known as exacerbation. So during remission, inflammatory um, inflammation goes down during an exacerbation, inflammatory goes up. And when the inflammatory response goes up, the severity of the disease goes up. And here's some cells and mediators in chronic inflammation. So we've got inflammatory chemical mediators are biologic active compounds secreted by cells that activate the body's inflammatory response. Important mediators include interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and interleukin-8, leukotrienes, prostaglandins, and TNF-alpha. So those are just some examples of inflammatory chemical mediators. So that includes our discussion about um, the inflammatory and immune processes. So we now know how, what happens when the biofilm develops and what, how it, your body's response is. Um, Direct, direct, direct destruction by the bacteria are when the bacteria themselves invade the tissues and destroy them. Indirect is when the, the host's immune response and the host's immune cells um, destroy the tissues. Two ways that they can be destroyed. 